Hi, I'm Hannah. Welcome back to Ohio Quest. I'm going to be making a lot more videos with Ohio Quest in the future, so make sure to subscribe for more videos. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do at Tokyo Station. So, when you first come to Japan, of course, the first place you're going to be stopping off at is Tokyo Station. Uh, that's where the Shinkansen stops and all of that. But a lot of people might be wondering, what do you actually do at Tokyo Station? So, we're going to find out. So, the first thing that you should do is turn around. It's the station! Surprise! <laughs> so Tokyo Station is actually massive. It's one of the biggest, I think it might be the biggest station in Japan. Correct me if I'm wrong. But there is so many things to do and see actually inside of the station. There is a huge amount of restaurants and shops and all of that thing. It's a bit of a maze, so make sure that you know which exit you need to get out of. But don't worry, Google Maps has you covered. But once you're done at Tokyo Station, the first thing you're going to want to do is put your suitcase into a locker, which is available downstairs, 500 yen most of the time and then from there we're going to be turning around again to see the first thing of the day the imperial palace i mean it's like really far like that way all the way down there so let's go so this place is a lot more busy at the moment because i think it's just because there's an autumn it's like it's like a beautiful place to see autumn leaves so it's a lot more busier than it normally is but it is so beautiful with all of these yellow leaves lining lining the pavement on the way to the Imperial Palace. <laughs> I do actually feel like skipping. <laughs> it's very busy today. Very, very busy. Not normally like this, I promise. <laughs> Love these kinds of trees that are like the pine. Yeah, but it's like little like little like tufts of, of like branch. I don't know, breathe. Every word for it. It's very Japanese. Love it. Yeah, very like bonsai looking. Yeah, like giant bonsai. Which actually, I guess a giant bonsai is just a regular tree. <laughs> <laughs> So the Imperial Palace like park area is sometimes considered like the central park of Tokyo in that it's a really huge park area, the nature is really beautiful, except there's the Imperial Palace, but unfortunately you can't actually go up to the palace itself. Only on two days of the year you're allowed to, but at least you can see it from here and then you can walk all the way around the whole area and enjoy the beautiful gardens that is apparently the main feature today, which is why there's so many people. But, I mean, we'll see how nice it is. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> oh, it's a cherry blossom tree. So sometimes the cherry blossom trees get kind of like confused in the cold weather. And it's like, it's time to bloom. And then it's, it's definitely not, so tree needs to calm down, but occasionally you'll see a cherry blossom tree in autumn. It's very like, I don't know, it just looks so Japan in a picture kind of thing. Two hour wait, a two hour wait to go into like the East Gardens. I don't have time for that, let's go this way. So if you go through the Imperial Palace Gardens up to like the north exit, you'll come to this smaller little garden here, which has a name that I forgot about, but I'll put it somewhere here on the screen, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and this garden is so beautiful and it's actually so much quieter than the Imperial Palace, so I'd recommend this one actually, to be honest. If you go this way, uh, they've got the Science Museum, which is right there, and then they've also got the Modern Art Gallery of Tokyo. And I have actually just made, actually, when this video comes out. Either my video will have just been made or will soon be made about the modern art gallery at Tokyo. I go into a lot of topics and details and discussions about the different arts that they've got there and the culture and how it ties into Japanese society. It's a bit more of a deep dive, so if you're more interested in that, go and check out my video on my channel. But we're gonna go this way, so go turn around. Oh, wait, 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 put this in slow motion. Ready? and stuff in these things was this one this was from one tree right but you know like sometimes they've got like huge pillars and stuff that's just from one really 
huge tree. It's like, that's a lot of wood. <laughs> I didn't plan that. So once you've finished at the Imperial Palace, when you exit from the north exit, just across the road, you can come to... Ta-da! This is called the Yasukune Shrine. This shrine was built to commemorate all the fallen soldiers in many, many, many different wars throughout history, dating all the way back from the 18th century. So some people have said that there's up to 2.5 million spirits enshrined here, which is quite a lot. And it's a huge, beautiful shrine. And I've lived in Tokyo for a whole year and I've never seen this before in my life and my mind is blown. Let's go. So this shrine is considered a little bit controversial to some people and that's because there's around 12 war criminals that have actually been enshrined here and they've also been visited by official people from the government and honestly it's a little bit messy and I don't want to go into too much of the details but hey, at least it's pretty. So because of like the, the cultural significance that this shrine has, it's not really advertised as a tourist attraction, I think because they don't want it to get loud and busy and uh, they don't want to take away from the respect that this place deserves. So that's why there's shrines like this, uh, shrines, that's why there's signs like this up in English, um, so, you know, saying to be respectful and that kind of thing. So definitely keep that in mind. And you'll quite, you'll notice that a lot of the people here are wearing like suits or they're wearing all black or something like that. That's because it's, you know, it's a very sacred thing to them. So something to keep in mind. It's so peaceful here, like considering like, like Tokyo City is right there, it's so quiet. <laughs> so right next to Yasukuni Shrine, they've got this war museum here and you can see right here obviously this large plane, they've got a train and they've got two cannons right there in the distance as well. And all of everything here is in English, it focuses mainly on World War II, but if you're interested in war and history of, you know, Japanese war in particular, I think you would really enjoy it. Because everything's in English, I already said that, didn't I? Yeah, so right outside the museum, they've got this statue of a horse right here and a little statue of a dog right there. And this apparently are built for all of the horses, carrier pigeons and dogs that have died in wars throughout history. Which is so nice, they've got a shrine for the animals. That makes me feel really like happy and wholesome. That's they all nice. died. Well, I mean, no, but like they're showing respect. <laughs> and like also just like right next to the, the shrine as well. People have like put a little bottle of water there as like, Maybe they're thirsty. I think oh, it's just it's like the cutest thing. It's so Japanese. I love it. Oh, that's a hundred yen. All right. Well, we know which one I'm getting. Cause I'm a cheap, cheap person. There we go. So a lot of like coffee in Japan from the vending machine, at least. It's either black, no sugar, or oh, what? Oh, it's because I <laughs> I didn't even press a button. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is what happens when I try to talk and do things at the same time. So, it's either black with no sugar, or it's got milk and lots of sugar. So, it's a toss up. I got the one with milk and sugar. You got black. Yeah, it's because you're much harder than I am. Hardcore. Also, it's a really great hand warmer for like when it's freezing cold and you shake the can, it gets hotter. And it's amazing. Ooh. Expected it to make the like sound, but no. Yeah, it's really sweet. It's really sweet. I mean, probably still, I don't know if it tastes better than regular black coffee though. The can looks nice though. Very fancy. So after a bit of a walk from the previous shrine that we were at, uh, we've come to Hie Shrine. I'm actually really excited to go here because I, once again, live in Tokyo for a whole year, still haven't seen Hie Shrine. Uh, so most people are familiar with Fushimi Inari, which is that famous shrine from Memoirs of a Geisha movie, and it's in Kyoto, and it's majorly crowded. Uh, Tokyo has their own version, which is this one right here. It's becoming a little more popular with Instagram nowadays, but it's still really, really beautiful. And it doesn't look like it's too busy yet, so hopefully it's still good. Let's see. <laughs> it's a lot of stairs to walk up. <laughs> yeah, very bright reds and greens and I like go walking with someone like upstairs but like you're having a conversation and you but you don't want them to know how out of shape you are so you're like trying to like hold your breath like yeah I'm fine it's totally good <laughs> how I feel right now <laughs> shrines you'll find like 
the little characters here or the characters on the sh like the actual shrines themselves will be a lion dog hybrid or like a fox but at here shrine the main thing is monkeys so you've got them like here and then there's two statues just over there with their little they've got the little red cape on it's adorable and another thing that here shrine is famous for is called en Mitsuri, i think is what it's called and uh en Mitsuri basically means like love time or like time tying a love knot kind of thing so a lot of couples come here as kind of like like to bless their relationship which I think is really lovely as well. Here's a monkey friend. Oh that's cool. Oh, it's it's got beautiful. a really long neck. Okay so we've come to the main part of here Shrine which is the part that you'll obviously find on Instagram and that is this. It's actually it's really so I, I usually I quite like Nezu Shrine. I'm partial to Nezu Shrine, you could say. Um, and but that's it's a similar kind of thing. But we were just saying before, uh, Nezu Shrine is a little more, a little older, and some of the shrines are kind of fallen down. I think it adds character, but this is very like aesthetically pleasing, like very perfectly straight down the center. I really like that it's like surrounded by so much nature and trees as well. It feels really like secret, hidden kind of area. Empty as well? Yeah, it's crazy that there's not, else Definitely here. not like Kyoto. No. Oh my gosh. But who needs Kyoto? You can, you can just come to Tokyo, it's fine. <laughs> so honestly, I'm really surprised that there's nobody else here considering how beautiful and aesthetically pleasing this shrine is and like actually how close it is to Tokyo Station. I've started to notice that like especially when I have like visitors come to visit Japan and that kind of thing they you you go to Tokyo and you want to see the main things like Shibuya, Harajuku, you know Akihabara that kind of thing but you, you you definitely go and see those things they're great they're so much fun and there's a reason that people go and visit them but stuff like this or like smaller shrines even or sometimes some of the best places that you'll find in Japan they're they're just completely off the beaten track or you're just walking down a road and you find a little alleyway and you're like cool let's check this out and then there's a shrine there or something and it's absolutely beautiful and the reason that it can be so beautiful is because it's kind of hidden and no one else really knows about it and it's got this certain kind of atmosphere about it that's just so much more enjoyable and it's I don't know you can tell that it's got a bit of a personality there not that the other places don't but just that uh, it's a little more immersive in that way um, so yeah I think like good message can be that some of the best places that you'll find in Japan like literally just from Tokyo Station you can see so much um, so yeah go and see the main points that there are to see in Tokyo and Japan but also don't be afraid to just walk down a random road because you might find something like this that is really cool so also these are the only things we're able to do in like half a day around Tokyo City but uh, there's so many more places like there's an international forum and there's also Tokyo Dome which is like a whole nother world in itself that has so many things like an amusement park and I don't know a lot of things I've never actually been there to be honest I'm speaking from no knowledge oh at some point one person but yeah there's still so many other things to see and do around just from Tokyo Station itself so yeah hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching make sure that you like and subscribe write down a comment down below what's a fun cool interesting thing that you found in Japan just by walking down a little alleyway or something that you think no one else has really found about maybe don't write where it is exactly because it's fun to keep hidden things hidden I think which is really nice anyway thank you for watching uh, you can go and check out my video about the museum which I've just made or will be making soon and yeah bye <laughs> <laughs>